Hey, this is Al from Transformational Gaming, and today we're adding a new segment to the channel called Transformational Gaming News. In this segment, we're going to be taking different articles that I found around the web, some from YouTubers, some from Twitter, some from other places that I see on the internet and we're going to discuss some of them topics as they pertain to gaming and other technology topics but on this phase of the channel we really want to get into more tech stuff uh, other tech issues that's going on around the web we really want to try and leave some of the more gaming aspects to what they don't want you to know uh, on that on that we really try to tell the truth about some of the misnomers and stuff that's going on but here we wanted to make a discussion based uh, topic so here I think that the format that I'm looking for is going to probably go a little something like this I'm probably going to read some segments of the article uh, as best as I can <laughs> and then I'm going to give my opinion about it and then I'm probably done uh, probably invite you guys to make some type of contribution far as in the discussion portion of the channel and pretty much that's it so these videos are not going to be that long so my plan is to make this kind of a one-stop shop for gaming review news and tech hopefully I'll be able to deliver on that promise because I really want everyone to feel like they can listen to some aspect of the channel and really have some type of favorite portion of the channel that they can come back to and rely on to get gaming news. I know that there's a lot of different types of sites that kind of does the same thing but I think that the difference between my site and their site is that my site is more uh, specifically about tech rumor and games where a lot of the other channels is more about news and stuff like that so hopefully we can come to a situation where someone likes something from the channel and that's kind of what I'm looking for so today we're going to be discussing the cable industry and the core cutting that's going on uh, everyone seems to be losing their mind uh, Viacom, as you may have heard, is dropping out of the cable business, uh, or they may be dropping out of the cable business. They're still trying to petition uh, that uh, they keep some of the BTs and the VH1s and stuff like that. But <clears throat> we're not going to specifically talk about that. What I wanted to talk about was uh, the big gash in cord cutting that is going on for the past year I was just talking to my daughter and I was telling her hey look you're coming up in a time where you can tell your children hey I remember we used to have this thing called cable <laughs> because I think uh, cable is at least going to change uh, the way we think about it and right now I want to read an excerpt from a article on a website called uh, BGR and a guy named uh, Jacob Siegel uh, you can follow him at Jacob Siegel uh, on Twitter but he, he wrote an article and here's some of the things he said he said if you ever want to prove that cord cutting is going to be more than just a fad look no further than the cancellation numbers for pay TV subscriptions in 2016, Bloomberg reported that cable, satellite, and telecom TV services lost a total of 1.7 million paid subscribers that year. That was estimated to be the largest exodus of paid TV customers ever recorded. But according to the extremists, that record could be broken as soon as this year. Uh, now, I pause. Uh, the reading of the article for two things one I want to remind you that I will be posting a link to this article uh, because I, it's not very long but it's very interesting but the real deal is is that 
uh, and he gives some numbers uh, about uh, the core cutting this year it's gotten closer to 2 million people additional subscribers who's cutting the cable and really there's a lot of blame that can be going around uh, for me the real blame is the price I mean a lot of people I barely have time to do this news channel I can imagine people who don't really have time to watch television uh, you know even when they do watch television it's usually to watch some type of marathon or some type of binge watching of an episode of a series or something like that that's can't that's come on television and people want to get things in bite size and internet is the perfect format for that but to me jacking up a cable bill you know once you get like some regular channels and your cable bill is still a hundred dollars I think we lost something now don't get me wrong like I live I, I live in a place where Spectrum is off and Spectrum does an excellent job with the internet for the most part it's always up but the point I'm trying to say is is that even with that there's got to be a package where you are not paying an exorbitant amount of money for cable and even some of the packages are pretty terrible I hate when they force you to get a phone with cable and internet I mean getting cable and internet sure I could see a hundred dollars uh, I would like it to be eighty dollars uh, or seventy dollars but go figure right you're getting high speed internet service but when they try to make you a phone and try to justify the hundred and twenty something dollars that they trying to charge you or the ninety something dollars that they trying to charge you I just think all of it's just overpriced and the real issue is is that <clears throat> there's a lot of responsibility that can go around I mean cables prices ain't the only victim here you have some of these cable outlets and cable channels who overcompensated for some of their shows and just because your show or your sport or whatever that you have is showing ratings it's not an excuse to just jack up a bunch of prices because that does not signal that people are watching said channel uh, for example ESPN it's been well documented especially on the radio how they're getting rid of everyone man they got rid of John Clayton I couldn't believe they got rid of John Clayton John Clayton was one of my favorite reporters they just lost a lot of people and the real issue is is that they pay too much for the NBA they pay too much for the NFL and they come around and they ask cable for a lot of money and then they get in these blackouts and these drop down drag out type of negotiations and that cost comes over to the consumer and so everybody is to blame in my eye but the real issue is is that somewhere along the line they have to stop and ESPN I know Disney is going out on their own and they're going to start offering services themselves but I think ESPN is probably one of the people who is the most responsible for the rising cost in cable and it's around Robin but ultimately all these expenses get pushed on us and so my thought is is that stop overcompensating sports is great the personalities on ESPN are great but to charge you know that trickle down economics to us I just think that it just comes from greed you know and I think the NBA is is part of it too you know the NFL you know they want more money the players want more money and that's where the money's coming from it's coming from cable but let me tell you something the cable is going down because people these Millennials you know the people that's a you know, little bit younger than me who are adults now, they do not want to pay a hundred dollars hundred and fifty dollars just to see a couple channels that they like 
cable is going to have to do two things. They're going to have to either dissolve and let these companies usher out whatever channels that they want to usher out or they need to fundamentally change the way they offer cable to us. One of the people who called me up said, you know, Spectrum is now having a downloadable app so you can watch your TV shows. And it, it's just ridiculous. So the final thing I would like to talk about are the streaming services. And I want to quote another uh, piece in the article uh, by Jacob Seeley. And it says, considering how expensive cable services have become, this doesn't come as much as a surprise. There are also new streaming services popping up everywhere, many of which include live TV programming. Why pay over $100 for cable when you can get all of the same channels on DirecTV Now, Sling, or YouTube for less than half the price? And you know, that doesn't get any more truer than that. I mean, we all know what's been happening to cable. I mean, this is not new news, this is not breaking news. But the only significant part of this news that is most significant to me is the fact that the rate of the disconnection or the cut cord cutting is speeding up astronomically, like exponentially, like Two million people in one year is just devastating and the writing is on the wall and you know I just want all my subscribers and all my uh, fellow listeners and things like that to understand that the way we watch TV is really about to change and hopefully it changes for the good. Uh, I don't know how it's all this is going to go like I don't know if somebody like Viacom will go to someone like Netflix and say hey look let's make a deal or will they try to open up their own stuff if they open up their own stuff I think we're going to be in trouble but I digress hopefully they can make out a deal with Netflix and they can put new content and original content on those those streaming services to, instead of trying to open up their own because if they try to open up their own Man, yeah, I just think we're going to be screwed. And when I say screwed, I mean by just the price that they're going to try to charge. I mean, they may try to charge $30 a month for some of their TV programming. So I think going with Netflix is probably the best way to go. Uh, not to mention that the startup woes that happens with streaming services. I mean, it's really tough to get everything on board and get everything uh, set up so that users can log into their account and you know have a feasible enough interface to go and select what they need instead of looking everywhere all over the place so here's the hoping that they get with Netflix but we'll save that for a later discussion but I think that pretty much wrap up this topic here please subscribe uh, comment in the comment section uh, hit me up on Twitter I promise I'll respond <laughs> um, and tell me what you think about the video tell me what you think about cable uh, are you a millennial what do you think about cable and and all of the price points all of the line of products that they have what do you think about it you know where you where do you see cable going from here do you think it's going to a good place or bad place please comment in the comment section and this is al from transformational gaming over and out